You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are continuing the Set Apart to Serve series today. We get a whole family. Well, part of a part family. Of a family. <laughs> part of a family. But we get a mom and dad and a son today mm-hmm. and get to share their story. Excited to share that story here on The Coffee Hour. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today part of the Magnus family. <laughs> we have mom, dad, and son. There are a few more members of the Magnus family as well. We have Cheryl Phillip and Evan Magnus. Thanks so much for joining us in studio today. Oh, we're great. Um, happy to be here. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having you all. Uh, so let's start with your story, Evan. Uh, a student at Concordia University Chicago now going into what year is this? The junior year. Junior year. Yeah. Already? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How's that possible? <laughs> Well, congratulations <laughs> going into junior year. What are you studying at Concordia University, Chicago? Well, currently, I'm majoring in theology. I'm also part of the pre-seminary program, and I'm minoring in biblical languages as well as communications. I'm also part of Capella, of course. So I do some music yes. and organ le- lessons on the side. Sounds familiar. Biblical languages, communications. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Capella. Yeah. yeah, I was in that a similar program. I, I say that's you, yeah. Yeah, I was in Capella, I got the though. Capella part. You got the Capella part. Yeah, I did sing, but I didn't do Capella. But <laughs> I, I studied communications and theater at Concordia University, Chicago. I, too, was in the pre-seminary program. <laughs> I did not go to seminary, though. Well, I visited the seminary, but mm. I didn't mm. attend seminary. But here now at Concordia... Oh, no, I'm at Concordia KFUO. KFUO. <laughs> yes. Evan is at Concordia. Evan's at Concordia. Correct. Evan, when did you start thinking about studying to become a pastor? Well, I don't think there was one specific moment where it kind of clicked for me that I wanted to be a pastor or was interested in going into ministry. It's a very gradual process, Mm -hmm. and I don't exactly know know, how far back it goes into my childhood or my youth, but I do know that for a while, of course, I was raised by a very, very Lutheran family, of course. My dad being a Fairly well-known cantor in the LCMS, and of course, my mom being lead yeah, managing editor, a reporter online currently. I was definitely raised in a very Lutheran environment, and that definitely had an influence on me. And along the way, some of the pa- some of the pastors at the congregations we've been at, they'd told me, "Hey, you should consider being a pastor." So that seed was planted in my head. The seed was planted, and uh, it was just nourished over time, very gradually, very naturally. And it wasn't really until probably during my final two years of high school that I really started thinking to myself, okay, this might actually be something I want to do. So that's when I went to Christ Academy for the first time at a Fort Wayne seminary. And that fueled my interest in the seminary even more. I still wasn't 100% committed to it though. Mm -hmm. And even going to Concordia Chicago, I was very much apprehensive to the idea of committing to seminary because I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm 100% on this yet. I don't want to make a commitment if I don't know that I can keep it. So, of course, going to Concordia, Chicago, during my freshman, going into my freshman year, Pastor Jeffrey Leininger, he was still chaplain at Concordia, Chicago, and he was very influential in getting me to, getting me to actually go into the pre-seminary program because he told me, hey, no harm, no foul if you decide you don't want to go to seminary anymore. You can just go into the pre, you can come into the pre-seminary program, you can study with us, and you can feel your way. If you decide you don't want to actually go into seminary after a while, you can drop out, no harm, no foul. It's non-committal. You can... And at the point, I was like, okay, I'll stay with pre-seminary for now. I will go into the program. I will take theology classes here. For now, I'm going to major in communications, which was my original major before I switched over to theology full-time. And, of course, Pastor Leininger is now gone. We have a new chaplain, Pastor Raditz, and he's phenomenal. I can talk a little bit more about him later if you want me to. But anyway, it all just gradually built up and... Now um, I'm very much commit, very much committed. I would say towards going to one of the seminaries eventually, whether it's going to be St. Louis or Fort Wayne. I have not decided yet, so don't ask me that question. <laughs> oh man, that was my next question. <laughs> but yeah, that's essentially my story. So that's so great, and and I know. I mean, I, I've known your family for several years. Full disclosure: Cantor Magnus is the cantor of my church, so I know your family really well. And Cheryl, we had you and Caitlin on the ladies' lounge mm-hmm. for a different. So if you want the other side of the Magnus family. We have another episode up floating out there. <laughs> but it's so great to hear your story, Evan, and how all of these different experiences of have you've had all these different formational experiences and and having that air that space 
at Concordia Chicago of of just being able to feel it out and and not necessarily having to commit immediately because this is a formational yeah. process. It's just a, it's a discernment mm-hmm. process. Talk a little bit more about your experiences. You mentioned the your your last two years of high school and Christ Academy. Mm-hmm. How did those experiences help shape help shape that discernment process as you were thinking as a as a later stage high schooler yeah. about about what your vocation would be? Well, my junior year of high school, or maybe right before, I forget exactly. Yeah, it was right after my junior year, actually, when I went to Christ Academy for the first time. But a little bit before that, I was starting to develop more of an interest in studying theology and maybe going to seminary eventually. And at that point, I decided to go. To, when I did decide to go to Christ Academy, I was very much in a mindset of, I want to be a huge theology nerd. I want to study the Word, and I want to geek out over theology with all these other Christ Academy guys. And that was me for that first Christ Academy. Mm-hmm. The stereotypical young seminarian, if you will. <laughs> and then it grew from that point into something else uh, with some coaching from family, of course, and also just from observing it from other influences in my life. I started to drift a bit more away from interest in just simply studying hard theology. Once I got out of Christ Academy, I was actually kind of amazed at how knowledgeable some of my fellow Christ Academy people were. Some of my fellow students were incredibly knowledgeable like I was only I was getting into Christ Academy and some people some of them, my friends were already talking about like a Maccabees for example and talking about the <laughs> epistle of Barnabas I'm like I've never heard of this stuff in my life and I felt like almost overwhelmed at times I was like I don't even know if I'm really material to go into seminary I don't yeah. know any I don't know half of this stuff but eventually I started to learn more that it's not so much being a huge theology nerd that matters in the seminary or the ministry it's exactly that ministry having a heart for ministry pastoral formation as uh, sarah mentioned earlier it's a formational process cultivating a pastor's heart there's a book i still need there's a book i still need to read about uh, the care of souls by uh, by hal sinkbile mm. but from what i've heard about it very much focuses on cultivating past- that pastoral heart and favoring that over having all of your doctrine 100 percent straight and don't get me wrong doctrine is important and theological knowledge is 100 percent important but if you don't have a heart for shepherding the sheep, that is not necessarily going to serve you well in the office of pastoral ministry, especially not in the parish ministry. And I got to f- I got a feel for that. Actually, my senior year of high school, I served at as a Kairos leader. Mm-hmm. And for those who, who didn't go to Lutheran High School South, essentially a Ky- Kairos is a small group that is run by student leaders. So there are several groups throughout the school. Two student leaders were assigned to each group and us leaders, we would lead our small groups of students in devotions, fun activities, and you name it. So I got the opportunity to practice writing my own devotions, and and I don't want to say preaching because it's not preaching. I'm not a pastor yet, but it was it was it is I kind of got to dip my waters into what leading a ministry would be like, and I started to realize, hey, this might actually be something I can do. I actually have a heart I have a interest in doing this I have a heart for this I have a heart for proclaiming the word teaching it and even if I'm not the biggest theology nerd I still have the heart to be a shepherd I have the desire to shepherd God's flock and so that's the perspective I've taken of the ministry and what has kind of led me to that point Mm -hmm. what kind of support did you have from teachers and other adults when you were in that position of of serving other students Mm -hmm. through the Kairos well each uh, Kairos group they have a, a professor or a teacher leading or supervising the student leaders as they give it so it's not just the two students you also have the professor leading and of course not every uh, they're different not every, of course not every teacher is a theology professor at lutheran south but it helps to have that support that backup and you're not just totally on, on totally on your own so being a student still getting a feel for things that was really great to have that support and also just having the people i've met at christ academy i could always go talk to them if i need advice and also all the pastors I've met throughout my life. I'm my church pastor at Village. I had no shortage of resources and to go to when I needed aid. What does it mean for you as a student at a Concordia University to have a campus chaplain or campus pastor who also speaks with you about vocation mm-hmm. and uh, considering the opportunities, considering the possibilities before you? What does it mean mm-hmm. to have a campus pastor like that? I think part of it is having the assurance that there's someone who's already in the ministry watching over you and seeing and helping you, helping to monitor you and to see that you're actually fit for the ministry. Because uh, one of the first things Pastor Leninger told me 
when I was going into pre-seminary, I was expressing my concerns about, oh, I don't know if I want to be in pre-seminary. I'm not sure if, I mean, I wanted to be in pre-seminary, but I wasn't sure if I was cut out for it because I didn't want to make that commitment. Uh, he told me, if you're not pastoral material, basically he told me, I'll tell you if you're not pastoral material. <laughs> so, <laughs> so having that accountability is actually very handy. And of course, that's not the necessarily main role of a pastor or of a chaplain, but it is a huge benefit, especially to a pre-seminary student. But even outside of being a theology student or a pre-seminary student or what have you, it's just great to have that minister available on campus. Students will, I've seen students will often go for pastoral counseling with a chaplain. That's not a resource you typically find at non-Lutheran or non-Christian universities. Like if I went to maybe Truman State or and I'm not sure what the situation at Hillsdale is, but I don't know. I don't know if they necessarily have. I don't think they have on-campus ministers. De- they definitely don't have Lutheran ones. So having the chaplain on campus and also just the entire campus ministry, the chapel life, and the rest of the theology department, it's great having that resource and that nourishment available to you. The spiritual nourishment is just a necessary resource to have um, when you're going when you're leaving home, going out into the world for the first time. We're talking with Evan Magnus and his parents, Cheryl and Philip, as Evan is studying as a pre-seminary student at Concordia University, Chicago, and his plans to attend seminary. We'll continue the conversation in just a moment. Right here is Set Apart to Serve on the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are in the Set Apart to Serve series today talking with Evan Magnus and his parents, Cheryl and Philip, as Evan is a pre-seminary student studying at Concordia University, Chicago, planning to attend seminary in the future as well. And now we get to talk with mom and dad about, about their son and that process of exploring vocations and considering pastoral vocation and what 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 led up to that? What was important to you as parents in helping your son explore potential vocations for the future? We'll start with you, Dad. Evan talked about how it was a gradual process, and he can't really trace it to the beginning. But when he was three years old... Oh, I was going to say this, too. No. I was going to say this, too. No, You're not he bringing was, this up. No, <laughs> but, yes, this, is, no this, is, this is so wonderful. It's wonderful. He, he would he would play church at home. Mm. So we'd be in there and he'd be in the next room and he would have had a makeshift cross, makeshift cross and he would have little processions and then announce singing a hymn. And Evan Church was always kind of fun because it was always focused on the ritual actions, right? Because he's a three-year-old. So well, it's right, I had like a bunch of communions all the time. Like, <laughs> so, so like Evan Church always was like processing, passing the plate three or four times, communing a couple of times, you know. Sounds no, very Lutheran. Yeah, no, but it was just, it was, it was just all, all, the, all the movement, right? Because a, a three-year-old's not going to like play Kyrie Gloria, Old Testament reading, you know, Psalm, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, but he was like, and now going to have communion, you know, and he would get up and anyway, so it was great. So, so the Lord was working on him from the beginning and we just give the Holy Spirit credit working through the word. And, and I, I, I think, you know, that doesn't happen just, you know, mysteriously, it happens through living the Christian life. And we live this out in our home as first as homeschoolers. Later, he went to Lutheran High School South, but his first you know, elementary, junior high were homeschool. So we had daily chapel at home and we're the kind of family that prays regularly and has devotions together regularly. So, but, you know, lots of families, do that and their kids don't opt for holy ministry so it's kind of a combo platter like if you if you don't do these things right if you're if totally secular and you're you're not in the word and you don't go to church you're you're it's pretty rare that you know your child's going to go and say oh i'm going to be a pastor right so 
But uh, at the same time, it doesn't you know guarantee that, but it opens the door to that. And then God you know works through that. Cheryl? Yeah, going back to your example of Evan having church services when he was three years old, and that was probably the earliest little signal that we got that we might have a future church worker. But it continued um, through his life. I mean, he has demonstrated in so many different ways over the years that pastoral heart that he was talking about early, earlier in the program. You know, this is a young man that I watched sit by the bedside of his grandma as she was dying in our home. That's my mom. He sat with her. He held her hand. He prayed with her. I've seen his to interact effectively with any number of people in the congregation, all different ages, but particularly he just has a heart, I think, for older people. I've seen that on multiple occasions as well. He's a young man that if we're driving in the car and something comes up on the radio, there's a disaster, there's a need, he'll just say, well, let's pray. And he'll and he'll lead the prayer. So that heart has been there a long time. So his dad and I are not really surprised, although maybe it's taken him a little bit by surprise in the last few years. And sure, he, it, takes a longer, yet... it takes a longer to, to figure that out, but yeah. he's also the young man when he was a freshman at Lusso and I was directing the choir at Concordia Kirkwood and would visit choir members in the hospital mm-hmm. on more than one occasion. And after picking him up from school, we would go to the hospital and make hospital calls. And you know, he was you know, very, very much showing pastoral skills at that time with his attentiveness to seasoned citizens and and sick, you know, someone recovering from a procedure and joining with the prayers. And I remember the the choir members were very impressed with Evan, that, Mm -hmm. that, you know, a freshman in high school would be such a, a caring soul and just so focused on the ministry to their, to their souls. I'm feeling like this is a huge flattery show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have two parents in the room. What do you expect? <laughs> anyway, I'm so I not inter- sure. Well, I interrupted you there, Cheryl. Would you continue your thought there? I just wanted oh, to no, get in before going, we went on from was, high school. I was going to say, you know, Evan is not in seminary yet, and he's moving ever closer, I think, to that decision, but he hasn't made the decision yet, so I don't want to put a, 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 yeah, a load like, of burden on maybe you. Maybe like 90, 95 percent, but... <laughs> <laughs> that this is I, a done think, deal. You I know, think this I'm is... close enough to say, like, yeah, I'm pretty confident I'm going to seminary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. But at the same time, I think it's important for parents also, you know, to you, you want to nurture, you want to encourage and support, but at the same time, it has to be their decision. So they need to have that space to, to arrive at that decision on their own. So I want you to know that it's your decision, Evan. <laughs> well, he knows that. What, one of the, we made that very clear to him. One of the things that really helped you're talking about Pastor Leininger and this young man, I think a lot of young people, I think this is good to have on your show because I think many young people who are considering a church vocation would be hesitant to take a scholarship or money because these are godly young men and women. Mm. And it says on the form, I will intend to go to seminary. I intend to be a deaconess. And and like, well, I think I want to do that now, but boy, I might, I might change my mind in three or four years. And, and Pastor Leininger was like, Evan, this is just about how you feel now. Mm-hmm. I've had people, I've had young men leave the program and come back. It's okay. You, you're only responsible for honestly telling us how you feel, what you think now is where, you know, what you're, the direction you're going. This is not signing in blood at 18 years old, <laughs> but I will be attending a seminary. And I think that was extremely helpful for him to realize that. And then he was encouraged to, ma- he, he majored in communications the first two years and then recently switched to theology. And he said, yeah, you don't have to major in theology because you might pivot out of this, major in something else. Mm-hmm. That's great. So anyway, I just want to give you know hats off to Concordia Chicago for, for their approach in that and Pastor Leidegger's conversations with Evan because it really helped him feel more comfortable with the discernment process. Yeah, our Concordias have some uh, stellar pre-seminary and and chaplain leaders that really help our young people determine what to do and and removing a lot of that burden of, oh, no, I don't know if in six years is this going to be the thing for me. I mean, nobody knows that (laughs) right now. So helping young people with those decisions and that discernment process is is really uh, incredible to see and to watch 
And so you guys, we already brought this up at the very beginning of the program that you guys are a very faithful church going family. Church life is just kind of part of the DNA of your family. But how how has that been important in raising your kids to to choose a vocation, to know that path? How has that congregational life and that worship life been important for you guys? Well, I think, you know, just going to church, there's never any question on Sunday morning about whether the Magnuses will go to church. <laughs> the Magnuses go to church. Nobody does wonder that. <laughs> so it was just always a, a, a fact of life. And, and I don't think that we ever had to make our kids go to church. It was just the way that it was. You know, it was just as much we wake up and we eat breakfast and we go to, you know, we go to school and we go about our day. On Sunday, we go to church, but it's not just Sunday. As um, Philip mentioned, it's, you know, throughout the week, family devotions, teaching Bible and scripture within our home, supporting that work at the school that you eventually went to, praying together when the occasion would marry. I mean, I think if you think back to when you were one year old, Evan, I mean, every night before you went to bed, what did we do? We read stories. We said prayers. Yes. Yep. Probably until you were about fifteen, <laughs> sixteen. <laughs> time to read. Time to pray. And then at well, some, yeah, I think at we, some point I think we, we let them the, do. I think we stopped the bedtime story thing probably a bit sooner than that. But, Maybe. I, but I think that I, I not much the prayer, sooner. The prayer. I mean. The bedtime story thing <laughs> I definitely ended back then. Well, I think you're right, the you're bedtime story would morph you're... into a, a, a chapter from the Bible. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, the prayer and devotion part stayed. Stayed, yeah. The before I don't know how much time we have left, but I I can't let this interview get away with earlier. You were asked a question between Fort Wayne and St. Louis. Oh, come on. <laughs> come back and, to this. And, and you're being very diplomatic and you know you don't have to answer the question. But I just, I just, no, <laughs> but I just have to chuckle because he hosts a radio program at CUC that they call Concordia Theology Today. And he has future Concordia church... Concordia Bible Hour. Sorry, Concordia Bible Hour. You're right. Gosh, I forgot the name of your program. What kind of a father? Oh, man. Demerits. <laughs> demerits. Big demerits. Thank you. Yes, the Concordia Bible Hour with Evan Magnus. And he's on, he's on University radio and he has future church church workers on as guests and they discuss books of the bible and various things and but he always has like his fun questions to kind of loosen up up things and one of the things he asks in the lightning round to all of them is Fort Wayne or St. Louis. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's like he asks that question of everybody, and we're going to give him a pass today. <laughs> well, to be fair, I do let them have, keep their answer of, I haven't decided yet, or I think both seminars <laughs> equally good. I don't pressure them into choosing one or the other. I just give them the prompts. Touche. <laughs> Touche. 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 Have you ever gotten the answer St. Catherine's? Mm. I don't think I have. Mm. I don't. I actually don't think I have. I think most of the time I would get St. Louis. I had a few Fort Wayners, but I think most of the time it was St. Louis, or I think both seminaries are equally good. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> so what does... What does this year look like for you in terms of classes and continuing uh, your, your studies and formation? Well, as far as uh, my theological and language studies goes, I'm going to be continuing in Greek readings this coming semester with Dr. Robert Sorensen. <laughs> also going to be starting in my Hebrew class, and I th- I'm, dra- drawing a, I'm drawing a blank on who teaches that class, but I'm starting on Hebrew this semester. I'm struggling to keep all my professors in my head at times. <laughs> Starting a formula of Concord with Dr. Lee, of course. Mm. Uh, and I think that's largely it. I'm probably forgetting one theology class. Oh, right. Intertestamental period with Dr. Robert Sorensen. It's going to be a night class. I almost forgot that one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you have a lot ahead of you, as well as Capella, mm-hmm. uh, singing with Capella, and I'm sure plenty of other things, and uh, continuing your radio program this year as well. That'll be probably next semester, not this semester. It's, I'm planning on making it largely a spring semester deal. Very good. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us today, Evan. It was great to get to chat with you about your plans and what you're studying at Concordia. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you very much. And Cheryl and Phil, thanks so much for being our guests. It was great to be here with you. It was a joy. (laughs) You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. You can learn more about Set Apart to Serve by visiting lcms.org slash SAS. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.
The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.